when Christ comes into your life, mm -hmm. there is a foundation. Without Him, there is no focus. Each one is after himself, but in Christ there is a, there is a oneness, a purpose. Welcome back to another episode of On the Ground with Samaritan's Purse, where we take you to the front lines and behind the scenes of our work around the world. I'm your host, Christy Graham, and in last week's episode, I talked to Pastor Sammy Dagger. And this week, I'm excited to share a conversation I had with his wife, Joy Dagger. Joy is such a light. She truly radiates joy. And I was personally encouraged and touched by her perspective and the way that despite hard times, the Lord has sustained her. It's hard to be in ministry, and it's hard to trust God, but Joy has chosen to cling to the promises of God. Sammy and Joy have been a team for decades as they raised children, shared the good news in dangerous places. She's a devoted wife and mother, and I've learned so much from her. I always love talking to Joy, and I'm grateful that I get a chance to hear her thoughts on being a spouse in ministry. I thought maybe you could share what you've learned over the years uh, in ministry. So to start, I know we've talked to Sammy many times and heard his full testimony, but I've never heard yours and how you came to Christ and then what that looked like going into ministry. So can you maybe share your personal testimony with me today? Uh, I'd be ha very happy to do that. Um, Coming to Christ was a life-changing experience. Mm. I've, um, we were both in the world and living for the world. Um, we knew nothing about a spirit, mm -hmm. you know, but we'd, we'd heard about God. We knew God. Um, I had been brought up in a, in a home where Sunday went to church, Sunday school. Um, it didn't change anything. My name was Christian, but I wasn't a Christian. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what it meant to be a Christian. Um, we came to Christ through uh, reading the Bible, the Word of God, and um, when we realized that Jesus was the truth, that He was the way, the truth, and the life, mm -hmm. um, we gave our lives to Him. Uh, it was a life-changing experience because I knew that I was a sinner mm -hmm. and there was no way uh, that I could pay my own debt. When I, when I saw Jesus and what he'd done for me, I was broken. And the, uh, I came to Christ with tears of joy and repentance. What, when I prayed for Christ, I meant that. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't realize that it entailed growing in Christ. After you come to Christ, there is a growth process, coming to know more of Christ. Sammy prayed. We prayed at the same time. But he, as far as he was concerned, that's great. Hmm. I can live my own life. I can do what I want. And um, it's all good for you. You, you, you keep it. So in, in, we were... Two, two roads. Hmm. I was on one path and he was on the other one. And it came to a head one day because there was too much tension in life and how things were going between us. And our son was very small at that time. It was at that time that I called on help because I knew that he was really going to a struggle. It was going to be either heaven or hell. Hmm. And I didn't want to see him in that state. So I, I, I really don't know how long it was between in that space, whether it was a month or two months, but I know it wasn't a happy time at all. There was no, no strength between us. And I called on the pastor and his wife, and they came, and uh, it was a struggle that day. It was a real struggle um, for Sammy to come through. What did you do mm. in those times? I guess you said you did seek counsel mm. and, mm. and help and intervention, but were you praying? Mm. I mean, were you trying to tell him what to do, or did you leave that to well, the Lord? I, after I came to Christ, uh, I learned, well, we all learn many lessons <laughs> in growing, many lessons. And if we don't, then we're not really growing in Christ. But one of the lessons that he taught me very early on uh, was let the Holy Spirit do the work. Mm. It's not my job to be the Holy Spirit. I had to learn to let go and let him be the man of God that mm. God intended for him to be. Mm. And so for me, it was hands off. And so through mm. prayer and encouragement, a wholehearted support in uh, 
when he came through to the Lord, it was 100%. I was the happiest person in the world. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. That, that gets me teary. We, we had a foundation. Hmm. When Christ comes into your life, mm -hmm. there is a foundation. Mm -hmm. Without him, there is no focus. Each one is after himself. But in Christ, there is a, there is a oneness, a purpose. And that's why I love talking to you because, yeah, we've heard from Sammy before and he, God has called him to do so much. Mm. He's been so faithful, but we know he couldn't have done all that without you. Mm. And I think it was, they say Ruth Graham too, Billy couldn't have done what he did without Ruth praying. And, and she said, you know, in parenting and in marriage, you do the possible, you know, do the things, the, you know, taking care of the kids, you know, feeding them, bathing them mm. and with the husband, you mm. know, serving him. Mm. But let God do the impossible. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the conviction, mm -hmm. the, you know, we can't do that. But I think sometimes it's hard. We want to. That's very true. And when we love the people and we see that we know them better than anyone else, mm -hmm. you, you want to step in. But that's mm -hmm. encouragement to me, especially in parenting. Mm -hmm. I want to step in so many times, but mm -hmm. I have to let God mm -hmm. really let them wrestle with God because He's p more powerful and bigger than I am. Amen. Um, so I can imagine, you know, like you said, once. The Holy Spirit captured his heart, and I mean, it was a pretty quick, I'm going to go and serve the Lord, right? When you say, I'm going to serve the Lord, it's, I think it's something, in, I would assume it would be something in everybody's heart mm -hmm. that you would want to go and share this good news. Mm -hmm. You would want to share the good news and say, I mean, that's what happened with us. We just knocked on our neighbor's door and say, hey, mm -hmm. did you know about this? Did you? And they said, well, yes, of course. We were trying to tell you. And I said, well, I didn't know that. I never mm -hmm. understood that. So, no, I, it, for us, it was just uh, doing what we could for Jesus, mm -hmm. sharing the love of Christ, um, opening up the home, just being available to meet anybody's needs for who was suffering or needed help or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and I love, yeah, how God called both of you. So now you're in the hard place to be a Christian, mm -hmm. and God has called you both um, into ministry full time. But as you mentioned, mm -hmm. no matter what your vocation is, mm -hmm. we are to be, we are to share the gospel mm -hmm. in all that we all that we do. Mm -hmm. So we're none of us are exempt. But you were called professionally, mm -hmm. you know, to pastor churches and to mm -hmm. do ministry full time. Mm -hmm. But will you maybe tell me about the early days? You know, as a pastor's wife. In a, in a country that isn't open to the gospel, what was that like and what did God teach you in the early seasons? I never looked at it as a ministry, hmm. Christy. I didn't look at it as being a pastor's wife and I had to do certain things. I didn't feel that way. I felt God had called my husband to ministry and it was my role, as I read the scriptures, to support him hmm. in that role. Um, it was my role to be available. If I mean, my, I, he came home many times with different people that he'd met uh, unexpectedly. So it was, you know, cooking food, preparing, making them welcome, uh, open home hospitality. And this was great because I loved to do that. Mm -hmm. and uh, And Sammy always helped in as well. So I never looked at it as being, well, I'm a, quote, pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. I'm a servant. And at the same time, Christy, I couldn't speak the language. Mm -hmm. So I used to pray, Lord, I cannot speak the language, but show your presence through me. Mm -hmm. When I shake hands with anybody and touch them, let them feel your love mm -hmm. and your grace. And... I just loved on people, basically. That's all that I could do. Mm -hmm. Well, it's so encouraging because I think here in the U.S., you know, I th overall, our churches are so uh, works-based and, you know, all these big productions and women's ministry, and, and which isn't bad, you know, to have big Bible studies. But as you're talking and that ministry of presence and just being, looking someone in the eyes, loving them, meeting them where they are, I mean, that is ministry. Mm -hmm. And that is what we're called to do. And so you're, not that you're making it sound simple, but I think we overcomplicate it here. And again, I know Sammy's told me years ago, and it's always stuck with me, 
suffering is the vitamin of the church, Mm -hmm. you know, and here Mm -hmm. in, in the U.S., for the most part, we take it for granted. Whereas you really were meeting people that were really, really struggling, either brothers and sisters that had been persecuted mm-hmm. and needed a place to come, mm-hmm. or or people that were, without Jesus, mm-hmm. empty. Mm-hmm. And you were really opening their eyes and sharing the light of Christ. You said you, you would pray even before you encountered people, Lord, mm-hmm. help me to be your light. How what Were there scriptures? Were there passages? Or was it kind of new every time? Mm-hmm. Was there something that helped you? Christy, um, we have been through so many different experiences Hmm. in our lives that at each point uh, it's been a case of going to the Lord and asking Him to sustain us in Hmm. that place. And it's been His Word that I've turned to and that I've taken and that I've stood on. Mm-hmm. Um, we've gone through 17 years of war. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw uh, our son separated and came to the States by himself. We were not there in any way t- for any of his occasions or whatever. But that was okay. We knew that was God's plan, and God had met him in his needs, uh, and God met us in ours. But it was a case of taking a fresh word each time. For example, when the bombs are falling on you, what are you going to do? Tell me, are you going to be afraid? Are you going to run away? Are you going to say, okay, many times it changes. So we were at home and we were living at that particular point in time on the sixth floor of a building. And um, we said, well... Where shall we go for shelter? Our neighbors had said, come down to the third floor and you can sleep down there. Well, I remember another, uh, we, we said, what shall we do? Shall we go? And it was a case of just depending, Lord, what should we do? Should we go down or should we stay? And uh, Sammy one time said, no, I don't think we should go. And I said, oh, come on, we should, you know, let's go down. He said, no, I will stay. So I said, okay, what was the scripture? Wives, obey your husbands. Hmm. So we stayed. The next morning, early in the morning, the neighbors came up and said, we're so thankful you didn't come last night. A bullet came through the window and went right in the bed where you would have been sleeping. Mm. Another time, it was a case of, I was afraid, uh, the children at home, and uh, we had friends in the mountains. And I said, Sammy, let's go to the mountains. Let's go and stay. Our friends invited us to go. Let's go. And he said, oh, no, 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 we can't do that. We'll stay home. And I said, oh, please, let's go. And he said, no, Mm -hmm. I think we should stay here. So I said, but I'm afraid. So we prayed. We opened the word. And the first thing that came to us was, why do you say to me, let us flee like a bird to the mountains? Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, Lord, that's fine. We'll stay here. Mm -hmm. So this has been the way that God has provided all the way on. Under the bombing and shelling later on in, in the uh, in the journey with the Lord, it was a case of running into the corner underneath the house and just taking a hold of the scripture and saying, Oh Lord, you are my high tower, you are my strength, protect, I pray. And I would just go in that corner and the bombs would be dropping. And he reassured me, they will be calm, they will drop all around you but nothing will harm you. Mm. So it was it was it was a joyous time mm. because we knew the Lord was with us. So there was great joy in that. We had lots of refugees at home at that time and we would go underneath the house and the bombs would drop and we would be playing darts or singing or we had a table tennis down there. So the Lord provided and he still provides he's the same God, whatever situation we're in. If we'll only turn to him and trust in him with all of our hearts, he will meet us where we are. Hmm. It's the word of God every time. It's Jesus. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing that. That was, um, I know one of my other questions was, you know, your name's Joy, but you do have such joy. <laughs> I mean, you just... Uh, radiate the Lord. Um, And that's what I was going to ask, you know, because it's not that you've had safety all your life or what we say in humans' words. And 
actually, when Edward was in the military, um, I remember praying with people because they would just be falling over, you know, sending their husband off, or we'd hear bad reports, and they would just be unable to sleep, unable to eat, and I was fine. And they would say, why? You know, and I said, because, you know, he's, the Lord has him. It's Psalm 91. I take refuge in the shelter of the Almighty. And I used to say, there's no better, safer place, you know, than being obedient to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And my friend, one of my friends said, I don't like that word safe, you know, because in in Mm -hmm. human, you know, man's terms, safe, that's not safe, Mm -hmm. you know, in the middle of a bomb shelter. You're not. So it was more, Mm -hmm. there's no greater joy Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than being in the center of the Lord's will, you know, when the Lord calls you to do something. So I guess, but as you're talking, there's a cost to following Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a cost. And actually, I was just reading Luke 2 the other day, and verse 35 said, a sword will pierce your own soul, that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, you know, and that was Simeon giving that proclamation, giving blessing to to Mary and Joseph, but also mm-hmm. warning. Mm-hmm. There, there's a cost, mm-hmm. you know, and and Jesus, mm-hmm. his life, mm-hmm. you know, he had a cost, mm-hmm. and but we have that too by mm-hmm. following him. Mm-hmm. So I guess how has the Lord, or how have you seen firsthand, you know, that there is joy? How has He well, reminded you, you know, when you? Oh, in the hope that we have, Christy. Mm-hmm. In the hope that we have. I was in a particular place just recently, and this young lady came and uh, from a different persuasion and I said hi how are you you look concerned and she didn't answer and I said are you okay we mm-hmm. were alone and I said are you okay and she said I'm scared I'm afraid and I said to her well I understand that I am too but you know I said for me as a Christian I put my hope in Jesus Christ, Mm. and I got so far, and then I had to stop because other people came in. But everyone is afraid. Mm -hmm. They have no hope, or I should say they're hoping and trusting in idols, this name, that particular name, this other name, any other name except the name of Jesus. Mm And it's when you mention the name of Jesus that you feel this wall that goes up. Mm -hmm. And so it's our prayer that God would, I mean, God is doing everything he can to reach people. But the fists are up to Jesus. So, yes, so people are afraid, and it's the hope. For me, Mm. it's the hope. It's the hope of knowing that whatever happens, Christy, I'm ready. I'm passing through one door, I'm going through, and I'm going to be with Jesus. So I'm not afraid. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid. Joy's unwavering faith inspires me. And she isn't just passively waiting on the sidelines while Sammy goes out and preaches and serves. Joy seeks out opportunities to be a servant of Christ exactly where she is. And when I sat down with Joy, her husband Sammy was with us. And Sammy shared how Joy was able to support him from afar by loving and praying with their children. I used to have about 10 Bible studies a week Hmm. and uh, leave the children alone at home and her. And she sits with the children and say, let's pray for your dad. He is somewhere here. Hmm. And she names the places. And they used to pray with me. And they used to feel that they are doing the ministry with me where I am. This is why our children, they never, never rebel against Christ and complain that we are leaving them alone Hmm. or I am leaving them alone. And when we started the ministry in a church, we have no music. We have no uh, uh, school, uh, Sunday school teachers. She brought the children, and she set them down, and she took Paul, who was five years of age, to translate for her mm. when she was teaching. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and actually, when you said that, I actually just heard a sermon about that, you know, as moms, you know, we are to build up our husband, you know, both in front of him, but behind his back. And that we do that outside the home, but especially with our kids, because you're right in the ministry. And I've seen that with my kids, you know, sometimes they get frustrated when their dad's gone or he misses big things. And, 
you know, the way I handle it mm. changes things. Exactly. But if you say, you know what? We get to send him. <laughs> yeah. We get to, you know, it changes everything. And when you start praying for him, mm-hmm. yeah. you're right. Yeah. They are then a part mm-hmm. of the team mm-hmm. and they are with you. So I agree. There's a lot depends on, on the attitude of, mm-hmm. uh, of the wife mm-hmm. and the mother. It's very true. I mean, the kids were... Uh, as soon as the service was over, they would go. Over, we'd get them involved. They'd go around and p- pick up the hymnals and the Bibles, and they'd put them straight for the next meeting. Mm-hmm. They were there. They were involved in everything. In, but they had to make their own commitment. Mm-hmm. They had to make their own commitment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, there's so many more things I want to say, but I just want to finish on. You were telling me the other day. You know, you're in a new season of life, of ministry, you know, especially after your horrific car wreck Mm. that we're so thankful you're okay, Mm. but, you know, you can't drive anymore. And so there's just been changes. And I think every season of life. Very true. uh, Restricts us. And, you know, in some ways, because even I'm home with the kids, so Mm. I don't travel. So each season has its limitations. But you you were saying you have even more now. Mm -hmm. So I guess what is God teaching you in this season? Yeah. Of ministry because yeah. it's changed. It has changed, Christy. Uh, it was frustrating in the mm-hmm. beginning. It was very frustrating for me, and the Lord had to teach me stop fretting about it. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a this is where, and I came to realize this is where I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, make the best of it. Uh, we can all say, "Oh, poor pity me. Um, what am I going to do?" And let's leave. Let's move. Let's go. Mm-hmm. But that's not the point of it all. God has us there. Mm-hmm. And until we know, if ever he says, move, then we'll move. But I doubt very much that that will mm-hmm. be, <laughs> that will be it. Uh, but he, he taught me, to stop fretting and be content mm-hmm. with what you've got. This is a new situation. And so I was, when I left uh, home, I had to decide just recently, I mean, coming here, what how my life has changed. It's become, in a way, much smaller. Mm. And I'm having to cope with that. But what I have been doing, what I've found, I use WhatsApp more. And Mm -hmm. I can communicate that way. Mm. Um, I may not be able to communicate and drive a car and go visit but I can communicate by on WhatsApp. Mm. And also through prayer, uh, when available, I can make a visit. Uh, but it's, it's very limited. It's very limited. So at the moment, the Lord has given us uh, two families uh, close by who are workers. And we are able to, I'm able to love them. Mm-hmm. And serve them and minister to them. And I feel that that is what I'm doing at the moment. I can't call it ministry. Mm. I don't call, I can't use that word as a wide term for me. It's just, I'm serving the Lord in that way. It's the way that I can do to serve the Lord. As we closed in this new season of life, Joy is using this time and the gifts that God has given her to serve in different ways. I love how she doesn't resent or dwell on what she can't do, but what she can do. There is always ministry around us, no matter our circumstances. And when I think of Sammy and Joy, I think of many things, but 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11 says, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another. As good stewards of God's varied grace, whoever speaks as one speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To Him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And they're both so obedient to the Lord, using their gifts and strengths each day for the gospel. And if you didn't get the chance to hear my conversation with her husband, Sammy, I encourage you to go back and listen. Hearing how they complement each other in ministry is so beautiful and something that only God could do. Thank you so much for joining us today. God bless you.